Hey guys, James here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about sharing my lifelong love of cars with you guys. Now, I just finished changing the oil in my 2021 Mazda CX-30 Premium Non-Turbo. It's my daily driver and uh, it was uh, it was due for an oil change. I was, it was cresting 8,000 miles. Today's video is a bit of a DIY, so let's rewind a few hours and I will show you exactly how it's done. Got the Miata half open to let this thing dry. Just washed it today. Oof nice and clean and ooh, that looks good. First step is to take a quick drive so that we can warm up the engine oil so that it can drain more fully when we open the drain plug. Oh, and there's the service light. Let's grab the things we need. We got my ramps, jack stand, and I somehow lost one jack stand so I bought two more. Uh, an oil collection tub thingy, safety glasses, gloves, this thing for taking off the oil filter. There are better tools for this, but I couldn't find one and I couldn't find mine rather and Home Depot ran out. So I got this thing instead. Oil, in this case, 0W20, oil filter, funnel, uh, this thing for sockets and screwdrivers. Uh, we'll see which ones we need. Some degreaser, paper towels, or shop towels, and we are ready to rock. Let's get this thing on the ramps. Uh, I'm not very good at this, so this is gonna be a little bit embarrassing. Victory! And now, what is quite possibly the world's lamest unboxing video, let's take these jack stands out of here. Now we're ready to drain the oil. So what we're gonna do is loosen this cap here up top. Don't actually take it out because what you wanna do is prevent dirt from coming in, but you wanna allow air in as the, as the oil drains out. Okay, time to go down under. Whoa, I'm getting a little too old for this. Okay. And taking a look underneath here, what we see is this thing. It's held on by two screws, uh, Phillips or socket. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use Phillips because it feels pretty flimsy, loose, all good. You don't need the, the crazy torque that a socket would provide you with. Whoops, forgot my safety glasses that whole time. Here we go. Time to look like a dork, but be safe. Here we go, we've opened up this cover here. You can see that Mazda designed this really well. First of all, the oil filter is right there. Super easy to get to. And then the drain plug is on the back side. What that means is that when you drive your car up onto ramps like this, the car is kind of tilted. And this drain plug is in the perfect position to allow all the, the oil to drain out. You don't need the car on level ground. And that's not true of every car. Some cars have the drain plug kind of on the side of the oil pan. This one's in the back, so that's awesome. This drain plug is 17 meters millimeters and what you want to do is loosen it slowly be real careful as you open the drain plug fully and as the oil drains out the arc is going to change and what that means is that you want to move the collection pan or tub so that it continues to properly catch the oil and you know catch any splatters too while it's finishing up the draining i'm going to try to take out that oil filter and this is a stage where you have to be really careful as well because the oil filter is going to contain you know some amount of oil in there which is also really hot oh there we go Ooh, okay never used one of these before and how does it what on earth wow this oil filter is very tight very tightly installed Oh, there we go, finally. Oof. Finally, the oil filter is loose. It seems like Mazda installs these things really tight from the factory. So I'm gonna take off the filter now. And of course, make sure your collection pan is where it needs to be because check it out, ah, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Switching to these gloves, guys. The uh, other ones were getting a little too oily. Also, uh, it was nice to have that bit of insulation uh, when the hot oil was coming out, but now we're just gonna deal with room temp stuff. So as we're waiting for the oil to finish draining, what we're gonna want to do is make, first of all, make sure that the new oil filter matches the old one. Let's go ahead and compare these. Okay, totally different. Amazon definitely sold me the wrong filter here. Yeah, not only is it a different size, it's a different diameter. Okay, well, Fortunately, I have another filter that I think is the same size, uh, and it, I, it was a spare that I had for the Miata, so let's check it out. This is the spare Miata one, and I hope this is the correct size. 
Yeah, looks right. All right, I double checked the internet and it does appear that this is the right filter for the CX-30 as well as the Miata. So uh, let's give this a shot and see what happens. To prep the filter, what we're gonna wanna do is open the fresh oil and take just a little bit of that and put it on this gasket right here. So that way it can really smoothly uh, seal itself against the metal surface on the other side. Now I'm gonna wipe all the surfaces inside here to try to remove as much of the old oil as possible. Next, we're gonna put the new oil filter in. And this one you can just hand tighten. If you put it on too tightly, what often happens is that it becomes impossible to take off the later on once it kind of settles in. But you do want to tighten it kind of as much as you can by hand. Finally, let's put that drain plug back in. This is also really important. You don't want to over torque this. If you over torque this thing, you're going to destroy the oil pans. And put this guy back on. So that's the hard part done. Now comes the fun part. We put in the new oil and then we get it to the right level and then we're done. But before we do that, let's clean up this space. My dad always taught me to keep my workspace clean and so far I have failed to do that. Let's tidy this place up a little bit so that you know we don't have trip hazards everywhere. And we're gonna wanna make sure that this is clean because whatever's in here is gonna end up in there. So I'm gonna spritz a little bit of de degreaser in here and give it a little wipe down as best as I can. That's good. Let's take out that cap. The manual says to put in 4.8 quarts if you are changing the filter as well. I'm gonna start with 4.5 because it's actually safer to underfill than to overfill. And then once we kind of circulate the oil around, I'm gonna use the dipstick to make sure that we're at the right level. And uh, people online say that you can add up to five quarts. We'll, we'll find out. But I'm gonna start with four and a half to be on the safe side. And we have some music coming from a, the pub across the street. They have that at least once a weekend. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I ran the engine for just a little bit to circulate the oil, and now I'm gonna check the level to make sure that we are good. And I'm gonna keep adding uh, if there's still room, because it'd be kinda nice to just use up that five quarts, but <laughs> we'll make sure that it's safe. Check it out, we are below the minimum level here, so we can definitely add the rest of that jug. One more thing I should mention that is that when you're getting the oil level, measuring the oil level, you gotta do this on level ground. And that's another reason to take the car off of the ramps before uh, doing this final check. The oil level is in between the, the minimum and the maximum. It's probably about 35 to 40% above the minimum. So I think we are good. This thing truly is a five quart. Uh, oil capacity. I think 4.8, not quite. That's probably like the bare minimum. The car is happy. New filter, new oil. Let's uh, look underneath. Oh, there are no oil leaks, just hopefully that's air conditioning con <laughs> condensation. Now let's reset the service due soon message. So we'll go into uh, information, uh, status monitor and maintenance settings, and then let's go ahead and reset this thing, boom. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the used oil that's in there and pour it back into there, into the, uh, into the jug, and then I'm gonna take it out to a proper recycling center to dispose of that, as well as the used oil filter. So now that the oil change is done and the garage is totally cleaned up and everything is perfect. I'm on my way to AutoZone to properly dispose of the used oil and the used filter. But that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me until the end of the video. If you like this video or found it useful, hit the like button. And if you want more from my channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of it. Again, my name is James. Thank you so much again, and I will see you in the next video.